Support Wrestle Talk! Must be nice to have a cool nickname like Switchblade. Beats the living hell out of Plumpy any day of the week. Pete's called Chopper. That's pretty cool. Tempest is called Tempest. But we don't have a wicked sweet name for Sullivan. Let's use this video to come up with a nickname for Sullivan. Put your suggestions in the comments, whichever is the top voted comment. That'll be Sullivan's badass new nickname. I'll start Lemon Square. I'm Adam from Wrestle Talk, and here are 10 pitches for Jay White's WWE or AEW debut. AEW won. Feud with Kenny Omega. Perhaps the biggest no-brainer when it comes to AEW debuts would be for Jay White to jump straight into a feud with Kenny Omega. After all, the two men have a whole heap of similarities. They were both leaders of Bullet Club. They both won the IWGP US and World Heavyweight Championship. They both hate Kazuchika Okada and they both got lovely hair. Some five years on, we're still clamoring for more between the two and while something was teased on Impact during Kenny's AEW and Impact World title run, nothing ever came of it. The feud would also be a well-needed change of pace for Kenny Omega who's been locked into strictly trios matches since his return from injury. Now just don't go joining WWE before this can happen, Kenny, please. WWE number one, Raw After Mania. Given WWE's penchant for delivering their biggest surprises on the Raw after WrestleMania, it feels destined to be the time and place the Switchblade shows up in WWE. And what better way for White to make the biggest possible splash on the biggest possible stage than by immediately confronting the new uwu champion, Cody Rhodes. Yes, Cody, fresh off potentially the biggest win in the history of WWE the following night at WrestleMania, could find his celebration cut tragically short by White, thus immediately cementing Switchblade as a main event presence. While White could appear and Blade Runner Cody into oblivion, he could also take the non-violent route, remind Cody of who he is and sharing the history the pair have in the Bullet Club. Either way, a Cody vs. Jay White program sounds truly tantalizing. However, it would inevitably give the creative team a bit of a headache with both men needed to be booked strong, but hell, AJ Styles post Mania 32 run didn't do him any lasting damage, even though he was relatively new to the company and didn't beat Roman. AEW number two debuts alongside Kota Ibushi. It's safe to say that Jay White's recent New Japan Pro Wrestling departure has made a lot of noise. However, we're all forgetting about yet another mainstay who's also enjoying that single life away from New Japan, that man of course being Kota Ibushi. While Ibushi is first set for a stint in GCW, a debut in AEW is surely an inevitability rather than a possibility. I mean, again, look at the shared history he has with the E in AEW. The Golden Lovers of Omega and Ibushi is a saga that AEW will likely tap into when Ibushi shows up. However, what if instead of teaming with Omega, Ibushi comes to AEW with a new tag partner already in tow and puts a beat down on the cleaner? The team of newly minted New Japan alumni could run through AEW's ex-Japan guys and establish themselves as a collective force to be reckoned with. WWE number two, a feud with AJ Styles, Bullet Club for life. While Switchblade could pursue Omega in AEW, WWE has themselves two former Bullet Club leaders for White to aim for upon debuting in WWE. While Finn Balor is an option, we also have a different scenario for him. Spoilers, that leaves AJ Styles, the Bullet Club commander-in-chief between 2014 and 2016. For White, Styles represents the past, legendary boots he had to fill in his time as Bullet Club's leader. One, like Omega, Omega Endeavor, he couldn't help but be compared to ruling over the club's, if I'm honest, least relevant years. If he feels himself in AJ's shadow, time to get violent about that. For this feud, White enters the house that AJ Styles built and aims directly for the man himself. Conveniently, Styles is also currently out with a broken ankle, leading to a perfect opportunity for White to appear and spoil his big return. And think of the bangers these two could put on, enough to make Drew and Sheamus blush. AW3, MJF's next challenge. MGF's World Championship reign looks set to be a long one, potentially the entire year leading up to the inevitable bidding war of 2024. Whilst your Hangman Pages, Adam Coles, or Ricky Starks of the world may potentially have their sights on Max's triple B fairly soon, how about Jay White jumps the queue and gives Max a true wild card of a title contender in time for AEW's next pay-per-view, Double or Nothing. This would of course result in White debuting as a face rather than his more established heel character. However, it's one that's not hard to see him pulling off. He's cool, after all. It's easy for cool people to be baby faces. Just look at Sullivan, his badass new nickname, currently doing the rounds in the comments. So why not go for it, similar to our Cody entry, by throwing White into the ring with the king of the AEW jungle from the get-go, you immediately establish him as a star at the very top of the card. WWE 3, the newest member of Judgment Day. Now, now hang on, I know how some of you will see this entry. Now, I know Judgment Day can be a bit, you know, silly. 
what is that in Finn's back pocket? But there's still a fairly established and mostly strongly booked contingent in WWE with a very prominent spot. So to debut White amongst a host of more established WWE names such as Finn Balor, a man, as we mentioned earlier, has a lot of shared history with White, it could really work, especially if there's a power struggle between the two men for control of that faction. It's not massively difficult to see White fitting in with the whole gothy aesthetic of the Judgment Day. As we mentioned, he's got that look down pat. However, what could really establish him in the group is by being Finn's hand-picked weapon been brought in to be the group's new killer. Could even put him in conflict with Damian Priest. AEW4, Brian Danielson's next opponent. So we mentioned that White could debut against the winner of AEW's recent Iron Man, but how about the guy who took the L, the man who's got to go home again? Brian Danielson. Following a loss in the world title program, it's always important to find someone or something prominent to move on to fairly quickly. Thus, a program with a debuting Switchblade would be sure to keep the American Dragon relevant and prominent on the card. After all, White is one of the remaining dream matches left on the table for Danielson, so it'd be a crying shame to not get them standing across from each other at some point. Whilst Danielson has had more than his fair share of great matches in AEW since joining, his actual feuds haven't had too much meat on their bones in the storytelling department, so how about giving old D. Bry or Bry D, I suppose, a really nasty piece of work, even nastier potentially than MJF, like White, to create some real long-term magic with, eventually leading to a big showdown a double or nothing. WWE 4, Roman Reigns' next challenger. It's honestly been that long that imagining Reigns having a non-title feud feels really odd and kind of wrong, but hey, we're all likely about to face that reality following WrestleMania 39, where Cody is expected to relieve the tribal chief of his title-wielding duties. But what exactly does Reigns do from there? His shoulders and waist are bound to feel a bit naked, though he barely carried the bloody things. Assuming Reigns doesn't disappear for a lengthy vacay, perhaps his first post-mania appearance, he can demand a rematch with Cody, only to be confronted with a brand new face looking to step to the head of the table. A win over Reigns in his first WWE feud would honestly be about as big a rub as you could ever imagine to get, not only in WWE, but in all of wrestling. Yet yeah, one that WWE could easily pull off whilst telling a larger story of Reigns' downfall and his spiral following Mania, potentially including the bloodline truly crumbling. AW5, the catalyst for Forbidden Door 2. While a second Forbidden Door could come as easily as a major Tony Khan announcement on Dynamite, a much more interesting way of getting the ball rolling for the show would be by having it come as the payoff to a larger invasion style storyline. Yes, I hear you, but JY isn't in New Japan anymore. Well, neither was Kevin Nash and Scott Hall in WWE when they debuted in WCW to form the NWO. How about White joins AEW? We can even get the Jay White is All Elite graphic. However, all along he's still Still working for New Japan and acting as an undercover agent looking to burn AEW to the ground from within its walls. It can be just like Austin in the Invasion storyline and this time actually good. Instead of having a bunch of friendly contests between New Japan and AEW for the sake of star ratings, let the two companies go to war and allow White to be the instigator for it all. And WWE 5, the bridge between WWE and New Japan. Speaking of New Japan Pro Wrestling and cross-brand relations, how about instead of White instigating a second AEW New Japan pay-per-view, he instead solidifies the bridge between that company and WWE, establishing a brand new seismic friendship in the pro wrestling world. As we've already seen with the Carl Anderson situation, WWE New Japan can potentially get along under Tripp's new regime. So what's to say that the acquisition of JY, a modern New Japan legend, couldn't further that relationship and dare I say even make it Facebook official? Sorry TK, close your eyes. A working relationship could see talent go back and forth between the two companies, blowing the fantasy booking door wide open to a whole host of previously impossible scenarios. Whilst this is a bit of a stretch, it's certainly nowhere near as impossible as it once was, once upon a time. And that's our list. What else would you like to see Jay White do? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to check out last week's pitch video, 10 pitches for changes Triple H can make to WWE after Mania. And while we're talking about changes, there are still some glaring issues with the WWE product that Trips hasn't touched. So hey, while we're asking for stuff, I'm Adam from WrestleTalk and here are 10 changes Triple H could make to WWE after WrestleMania 39.